XRP Future Millionaire. It's 8.33 Central Time, and as you can hear, my voice is pretty shaky this morning. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do my best. We actually have a travel day back home to Michigan. Um, excited to go back home. I, we, we close on our house tomorrow, which I'm very, very relieved about because it's been a brutal process, as most of you have followed now. Um, but I wanna thank everybody for the support while I've been out here. Um, but as I said yesterday with XRP, we did reverse back down and I tried to give a heads up to everybody multiple times. Um, we broke a very key support and a lot of people were like, well, that doesn't, well, some people, not a lot, but some people in the comments said, but uh, the support resistance is BS and that doesn't matter. I mean, it does. We knew yesterday, right when it broke down the 3803 support, we were in trouble. That's when I put the breaking, uh, or I put a warning out that said critical support broken. And uh, now we're holding the 200 day. So that's our last line of defense here is the 200 day. And now when you look at correlation, that was that downtrending uh, support or resistance line, you could say. Now it's kind of going to ride that back down. Those are upper end targets that could only be achieved if we held those 3803 and 3846 as support. That's why I kept saying it doesn't matter how high you come up if you don't hold it as support. You can come all the way up to 40 cents, 39 cents, but if you don't hold 3846 or 3803 as that support, it's very bearish in that area. And then you gotta come back down. Now, that is still a minor bull flag, I suppose you could say, or you could say we built it into a bear flag from the 40 cent range. So what I'm looking at very carefully today is the DXY. It's popped back up, and if this does come back up into the area, I mean, that looks like a bullish Gartley if it can get back in there. Right now, it's up against a critical resistance. That, that's a major factor right now. We're up against critical resistance, but we are being held on the 200-day, which is technically bullish. And if we get back up into this ascending triangle and break over, we're going to 107.20 or 82 I mean, and that's gonna be devastating for crypto, it really is. So I'm gonna go get my stuff ready, but I wanted you guys to see XRP. And the only thing that sucks is my flight isn't until, what is it, three? Mm, I think it's like 3.28 Texas time, which is central time, which is 4.28 my time, which means I won't get home until seven. I think my flight lands at like 7.06 uh, Michigan time. So I'm going to do the best I can with updates, but they might be spotty today because I'm going to be traveling. But after I do my house stuff tomorrow, because I, I close on my house, like I said, it's going to be back to the routine. <laughs> and I'm relieved. No more. You know, it was fun doing the PGL, but at the same time, I broke my back when I was 23. So doing that 9, 10 hours a day, and then yesterday I topped it off with a 12 and a half hour work day. Um, I'm fucking sore. It's just that simple. I'm sore. But it was fun, it was an experience. I met a lot of cool people, met some contacts. And uh, I appreciate everybody who was along for the ride. Now, the main thing when I'm putting out these videos, you've got to hit that motherfucking like button, period. Hit that like button, and I implore you to watch, recycle, repeat. Watch my content, recycle it. Let me see you sharing it on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, and start sharing my content on Twitter at the very least or Facebook, or any other social media, so that you can get my content out there and get more people in here. Because at the end of the day, when this market does finally reverse all the way back down, everybody's gonna need to have somebody they trust. With Bitcoin, a huge ascending triangle, and right now we are at a critical support level. And we broke down the 20 day, the 100 day almost. We're at the uptrending support, and if this breaks, the next line of support is 22,403 after you break the hold at 23,178. This was an absolutely brutal rejection yesterday at 25,307. We've talked about this nonstop. If it can't get out of this area, you cannot hit these higher targets. So now we're back down to support. But if we break this up, trending support, it's going to be a big move down today. So XRP Future Millionaire. I got it. XRP Future Millionaire, sorry, I was helping somebody open the door. Um, XRP Future Millionaire, hit that like button. And uh, I want to show you something Peter Schiff said before I uh, let you guys go. Make sure to hit that motherfucking like button. I really appreciate everybody. Um, also, if you want to join me on BitGet, as you know, I'm a 
ambassador to Bit get. That's why we were out where we were at. So let's just go to this. I'm not, I'm not playing this. I just want you guys to see. So if you want to join me on BitGet, in the video description below, you can join Tom's Army first and foremost. Join Tom's Army. We have not had a new member in quite some time, which is, which is disappointing. But, you know, I'm not going to base everything on the support I get, but the content I put out. So if you're interested in joining Tom's Army and showing me that support for $9.99 a month, you get that exclusive telegram with 254 people in there. So if you want to trade with me, and on BitGet, click this partnered link. And then uh, if you want to copy trade with me, you can uh, join XRP Future Millionaire to copy trade. Right now, we're just doing the leverage trading. But when we get into the long hold positions is when you guys are really going to benefit from copy trading. It's just that simple. Because when we copy trade, I can show you when to spot trade about to buy with XRP and all of our main coins. And I'm going to show you a building strategy, you know, as I'm buying them, as I'm building, just like we used to do in the beginning of my channel until we got into a bear market. Um, and then it'll help you because you can copy trade me. And when we're into the long hold positions, we'll just be building into our futures long. And then you can just add to your positions as we add to those. So, and then also until August 20th, which is right around the corner, what is today's date? I don't even know. August 15th. If you sign up on with my BitGet partnered link, the first 50 people get 20, 50 people get 10. And then right now up until August 20th, this is for my community, you guys get 10%. So you can deposit up to $1,000. You transfer it from another exchange and you get 10% back. So $1,000, you get 100. $500, you get 50. $100, you get 10. Simple, simple, simple. In July, flower up 22.7%, chicken up 17.6%, milk up 15.6%, bread up 13.7%, and eggs up 38%. That is year over year in July. But Americans didn't just pay more for food in July, they also paid more for shelter. During the month of July, the month with zero inflation, shelter prices rose six tenths of 1% on the month, and they're now up 5.7% year over year. Of course, what Americans actually paid for shelter is up more than three times that amount because the CPI doesn't use actual rents that people pay or actual home prices that this is what i always talk about guys so pay very close attention to this there's a reason i'm sharing this and also follow peter schiff on youtube just follow him he's going to teach you a lot so this is the owner's equivalent rent which is they don't use the actual rate increases of rent the real rate increases they ask the owners what they would rent their place out for now, I don't know anybody who's going to say a higher amount because they're going to want to pay less. But at the same time, who says that that's even what they say? The government's just saying what they, you know, what they want the numbers to look like. Why the hell would you use owner's equivalent rent? Why would you ask somebody? So that's like me saying, hey, how much do you think that TV's worth? Oh, you know, 250 bucks. But it's really worth a thousand. Okay, well, we're going to mark in the books that it's 250 even though it's selling for a thousand. It's horseshit people pay they use the made-up number called owner's equivalent rent that nobody pays but even that made-up number is the biggest year-over-year -year increase in shelter that the government has made up since 1991 and it's not just food and shelter that had big gains during the zero percent inflation month of july take a look at services not only did overall services prices rise again in the month of July, but the year over year increase is now 6.25%. That is the biggest year over year increase since 1982. So while President Biden continues to brag about having no inflation for one month, most prices continue to rise during that month. And for anybody who's still watching, I told you I'm gonna start doing this in the back end of my videos or you know, somewhere in between. So I went back into the old printing press and uh, we'll ripple, re this is all the way back from uh, a couple years ago, October 1st, 2020. We'll ripple replace Swift one day, securing larger and larger pieces of that pie is definitely not off the table. So here's a nice little video from David Schwartz. To what Ripple is doing. How does their new technology, the response that they've created compare to what Ripple's doing? 
Um, so they, they changed the, they sort of pressed on their customers to credit payments more quickly and they added an acknowledgement at the end of the payment. So it used to be fire and forget and now they send a message back from the end when the payments acknowledge. And that does address some of the pain points that people had. But I think, um, like, like one of the, one thing, there are a couple things it doesn't address. So one of them is it doesn't enable settlement at the time of payment. So if you think that that's an important thing, it kind of attacks our sort of sub, submarine strategy of like, we'll give you a better payment system and it can settle at the time of payment. But even if you don't care about that, it's still a better payment system. So it, I, I mean, obviously, obviously the, like, we'll give you a better payment system and it can settle at the time of payment. But even if you don't care about that, it's still a better payment system. So it, I, I mean, obviously the bi-directional messaging and, the, and, and everything, it's still a better payment system, but like if you can take away the major pain points, maybe that sort of attacks our strategy of saying we're going to take away your major pain points, like, well, we can take away some of those pain points too. But it doesn't fix the fundamental problem. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like if a music company tried to combat the iPod by like dropping the price of CDs or making them hold more data or something, like the fundamental problem is the settlement.